In today's tabletop review, we're going to be taking a look at a flashlight offering made by a company called Army Tech. They are a company out of Ontario, Canada, and they have a wide variety of lights on their website. I'll put the link in the description for this particular uh, light that we're looking at, but definitely uh, check out their other offerings. They have a ton of uh, different lights for everyday carry, tactical use, and so on. This particular light that we're going to be looking at today is called the Prime C2 Pro. It is a rechargeable high intensity flashlight that uses a magnetic base based charger charger it is designed to plug directly into your computer to recharge or if you use a optional wall outlet usb adapter you can plug it into the wall um, obviously the wall adapter is not included this particular item has a price uh, is priced at $90. Uh, this particular one has a SKU number of F01504SW. Now this one is uh, uh, is the uh, what they call the warm colored uh, light or the Kelvin rating is, is warm. They don't give me an actual Kelvin rating but uh, probably between three and four thousand would be my guess based on looking at it. They also uh, list a caveat that the warm light is about, uh, the output is about 7% less and the beam distance is about 3% less. So you have, you have uh, two options. You've got this, the warm one that we're looking at here and then you have like a super white one. Uh, so the, most of the flashlights on their website, pretty much all of them that I looked at, have a 10-year warranty. Uh, I'll talk about that a little bit later uh, when I have the specs uh, in front of me, but uh, that's a great warranty uh, from from this type of a flashlight. Some of the uh, parts of the flashlight are, are not warrantied for 10 years, like the battery, I believe is only two years, for example, but overall a 10-year warranty is, is absolutely phenomenal. So let's, move, let's go ahead and move on. Um, this particular uh, rechargeable light uh, ships with a uh, 18650 um, 3200 milliamp uh, lithium ion rechargeable battery and a bunch of accessories that we'll take a look at in a minute. So, you don't need to bu really buy anything else to get this flashlight up and running right away. This is more or less how it ships. Um, this is a nice retail packaging. Um, I, like pa um, I like packaging that gives me a lot of information at a glance. Uh, picture window is nice to be able to see the flashlight. Uh, we have some specs on the back, uh, and when list talks about the battery, um, uh, Richmond Hill, Ontario, Canada. Uh, let's see, uh, developed in Canada, components from Japan and USA, assembled in own factory in China. Let's see, here's some specs right here. I'll just read real quick. Uh, it is waterproof and submersible to 10 meters for five hours. The uh, weight in the battery, weight with batteries, or no, weight without batteries is 62 grams. Um, and this direct impact resistance at 10 meters. And peak beam intensity is 8550 candelas. And optic type and hotspot spill is TIR 20 degrees and 80 degrees. So a little bit of uh, technical details in the packaging here. Uh, good, good retail packaging. Now inside, get this out. We'll take a look at what's included with this particular flashlight. All right. So we have um, our user manual here, um, which you can also um, you can also get this off of their website, and you can get a PDF copy if you want. Um, for uh, you know for viewing on your computer or you can use the one that's included we have the flashlight and we'll talk about that in a moment the magnetic rechargeable cable and it is a USB cable and it's probably about two feet long so it's not extremely long but uh, it definitely gets the job done for plugging into your computer or, or what have you and you can see this uh, magnetic base right here 
connects right there. So that's that's basically how you you connect this to to, to charge it. And this also illuminates, and I'll I'll show you that a little bit later. It does ship with uh, two extra O-rings. Uh, these are the O-rings that go around uh, the battery cap, uh, the threads uh, um, on the flashlight where the battery cap screws down to. And we have a pocket clip, which can be installed uh, two ways. It can be installed like so, with the clip facing backwards, in case you want to clip this onto something else, like uh, if you're using this to work on a car or something like that, you could clip it onto something in your engine bay. Or if you're going to carry it in your pocket or um, in your tactical vest, you can put it this way. But there's only one spot here that the clip actually will clip onto. So um, it's a good solid clip. It takes a bit of force to get this on and it takes a bit of force to get it off. So uh, I'm not going to put it on because I don't really need that right at the moment. But um, it's a good quality clip and it's nice and tight. The last item that this ships with is a carry case. Uh, this is a uh, Velcro, Velcro closure type carry case that uh, you can loop your belt through and it has a D-ring so you could you know, use a carbiner or something and attach this uh, hanging off your backpack. Um, got the Velcro closure right there and then the light just uh, drops in. So. And it fits the light just fine and gives you uh, definitely adequate protection for carrying the light around. So, uh, some good accessories. Uh, with that out of the way, let's move on talk about the light. Um, the light ships like this with the battery installed. So, uh, you do not have to actually install the battery. That may not necessarily be the case with all of their offerings, but this particular one uh, shipped with the battery installed. Uh, the positive end of the battery goes towards the uh, bezel of the light. Uh, it ships with a Armitech branded uh, 18650 lithium ion battery. Uh, it's a 3.7 volt, 3200 milliamp. The uh, outer finish of this particular light has a nice flat black uh, anodized finish on it and the anodized finish goes uh, over some of the threads but not all of the threads. So, and the, the O-ring's right there, and there's also some sort of a grease or a silicone type protectant on there. Uh, that's the uh, tail cap right there uh, with the charger. There is no push button on this tail cap. The way to turn on and turn off the light is by the side mounted button right there. So, uh, this is a fairly heavy duty spring right here, but I do not believe this is a weapon based light. So, it's uh, for, if you were to choose a light to mount on a firearm, you might want to choose one of their other offerings, one of their tactical lights. This is part of their everyday carry line. Um, flat um, silver bezel. Uh, there's no glass breaker or anything like that. Uh, a single Cree LED, which is a... I'll have to get back to that. There's a specific model number for that Cree LED, which I'm sure you're all going to want to know. Uh, single uh, yellow push button. There is illumination underneath this push button. Uh, wh when it's fully charged and in standby mode, this will periodically blink green. It will also blink, uh, blink. It'll blink other colors to indicate low battery indication and uh, high heat. Because uh, this does have this is temperature regulated. So if it heats up too hot, you'll get a uh, specific type of a blink with a color that will uh, let you know that the light is probably going to dim the light so it can cool down so it is thermally protected uh, it does say warm light on it now the warm light um, like i mentioned 3000 4000 kelvin it's more like a, a standard light bulb type of color it's not super white uh, but it's not yellow and it's kind of in between yellow and super white so uh, there are two options for this particular uh, light we have uh, the Army Tech logos on it. We have a contour right here in the center for, for holding. We have a uh, flat area back here, which I do believe is for if you hold it like this. It's kind of a, a placement to, to put your finger so you can figure out where the button is without fumbling around for it. Uh, nice overall design, nice finish um, from what I've seen so far. To uh, turn this particular light on, you would press the button, press it again. 
Now, this is a click on, click off electronic button that can actually be changed to a momentary button. Uh, a lot of the programmability of this particular light is controlled via a certain number of presses of the button and or unscrewing the tail cap. Uh, same with the charging. So uh, I will go into some of the light modes. I'm going to talk about most of them, but I'm going to demonstrate how to engage uh, one of them. Uh, otherwise, it's going to, the video is going to get way too long if I show you how to turn on every single mode. But if you uh, watch me turn on one mode and cycle through the different options within that mode, uh, it's going to apply for all the other ones as well. So uh, first thing I'm, I want to do is I want to show you how we charge this. So uh, let me get the charging cable out and we'll get that ready. Okay, for the purpose of this uh, charging demonstration, I've actually got the charging cable uh, plugged in to a power adapter uh, so I can plug it into the wall. It's not plugged into a computer. Army Tech recommends if you do use um, that type of a charger, if you purchase one, that it is one amp or higher. I'm using one that's actually two amps. And I did charge this battery via a wall charger as well as a computer. It took about eight hours to fully charge uh, this light when it was uh, completely depleted. So uh, you can see, like I mentioned here, you can see right now, uh, you can't see very well, but it does have a green illumination when you uh, plug this in when it, and it's receiving power. So you know that it's plugged in and it's receiving power when it's green. If we connect it to the light, you're going to see that it's blinking red. And what that indicates is that it is not charging. So to get it to charge, we need to loosen the tail cap one quarter turn until this blinking light turns solid red. When it's solid red, that means you've loosened the cap far enough, it is charging. And when it's finished charging, all you have to do is keep your eye on the color illumination of the charging cable. It will change from solid red to green to indicate that it's fully charged. And that's all there is to uh, uh, charging this. So uh, when it's done charging and this turns green, you can remove this. Uh, you have to remember to tighten the tail cap again and you're good to go. So uh, that's the one thing that's a little different about uh, this particular light uh, than some of the other lights I reviewed is uh, you have tail cap manipulation. On other lights even that have a push button, uh, it requires, um, you know, some of the programming functionality requires you hold this button and press this button and vice versa. With this particular light, this is, uh, some of the programming functions are controlled via loosening the tail cap and pressing the button and tightening the tail cap and, or some combination of those. So um, most lights have multiple items that you need to manipulate to access some programming modes. So this is definitely not uncommon. All right, so that covers the charging. Let's uh, go ahead and let's talk about the uh, light modes. Okay, so I can get this clear and I don't uh, make any mistakes in my description here. We're going to talk about the programmable light modes uh, that this light uh, ships with. So I'm just going to start at the top and I'm going to go down and we're going to be talking specifically about the Prime C2 Pro, the one that we're, the light we're looking at here. The first mode, which is the highest output mode, is listed as the Turbo 2 mode. That's listed as 1700 lumens with a runtime of one hour. The Turbo 1 mode, 950 lumens with a runtime of 1.7 hours. The main three, 420 lumens, runtime four hours. Main two, 180 lumens, 10 and a half hour runtime. Main one, 35 lumens, 50 hours runtime. And then we step down into the Firefly modes. Firefly, Firefly three, six lumens, 12 day runtime. Firefly two, 1.7 lumens, 40 day runtime. Firefly one, 0.15 lumens, 200 days runtime. That's it with the constant uh, on modes. Uh, the very last set of modes is the strobe modes. Strobe 3, 1 hertz, 180 lumens, 52 hours. Strobe 2, 1 hertz, 1700 lumens, 5 hours. Strobe 1, 10 hertz, 1700 lumens, 2 hours. 
So those are all of the, the programmable modes uh, for this particular light. And like mentioned, I'm not going to showcase all of them. It's just going to make the video way too long uh, to, to showcase all of them. But the trick to accessing the modes, um, we'll talk about the one that I use, which is basically the turbo mode. That's I'm kind of old school. I prefer the, uh, you know, one click on, I have the highest output mode and one click and I turn it off and uh, I'm, I'm happy. So that's that's the mode I've been using with this flashlight the most because that's uh, that's the value I have with this this uh, any any flashlights actually. So to um, do our turbo mode, we press this button three times in rapid succession, and that will turn on the turbo mode from any other mode. So if it's in a strobe mode or firefly mode and you press it three times in rapid succession, it will turn on, uh, turn on the turbo mode. Now once you're in the turbo mode, we have two turbo modes. We have turbo one and turbo two. So if we press and hold the button, it will switch to the other mode. If there were three options, you do it again and it would go to the third one. But since there's only two turbo modes, this is how we switch in between the two. And you can see uh, the two uh, turbo modes are listed as 1700 lumens and 950 lumens. That's um, reading directly from the instruction manual here. So the firefly modes and the strobe modes and the main modes are all accessed uh, basically the same way. There is a different number of clicks for uh, the button. The main is two clicks. Um, um, let's see. The strobe mode is four clicks, for example. Okay, so that's basically how you access your different modes. Now this does have a memory feature, so when we turn it off, we turn it back on, it goes back to the last used mode. So for me, it's the 1700 mode, uh, 1700 lumen mode. And on those higher output modes, the bezel is heating up. And that's typical for these lights. Um, they will get quite warm. And if, you, if it gets too warm, the LED will start blinking. I'll talk about that shortly when I find the section. Uh, and it will dim the light so the, the assemb assembly can cool down. And once it's cooled down, it will revert back to the higher output mode. So you've got some thermal control circuitry built into this uh, to keep this light from getting so hot that it destroys itself or it burns your hands. Uh, so I mentioned the uh, tactical mode, and to I got to. I gotta have the instruction manuals in front of me here um, because there's so many different uh, methods for uh, choosing uh, different modes and such. The tactical mode all right it says that we need to for the tactical mode we need to unscrew the tail cap one quarter turn press the button and tighten the tail cap while holding the button pressed in. And then we can let go of the button. Now we have tactile mode where it, the light is only on while we hold the button down. So to revert back to our click on, click off mode, we're going to press and hold the button and unscrew the tail cap a quarter turn. And let go of the button screw the tail cap back in and now we have on off mode. So pretty slick. Um, so for, for you guys that want that tactical momentary only button, you've got it. And for us guys like myself who like the on off on mode, um, we're both uh, provided with uh, what we want with this light. So it's a, definitely a very versatile uh, programmable light. The um, Warranty with this, I um, wanted to talk about that. Like mentioned, it's a 10 year warranty, but that excludes batteries, chargers, switches, and connectors. All of those have a two year warranty from the date of purchase. And of course, there's some other caveats about that. Uh, it doesn't cover improper usage or attempts to modify or repair the flashlight or um, 
long time application in chlorinated or polluted water or other liquids other than water. Um, I guess that means when you're storing it, don't store it in motor oil. Um, uh, so uh, there's a few caveats to that, but overall I think this is a really great warranty to have on this light. The Let's see, the size and weight of this light is listed as 122 millimeters with a body diameter of 24.5 millimeters, that's pretty standard. Head diameter 24.5 millimeters and a weight of 62 grams. The Cree LED, which I mentioned earlier, specifically is a Cree XHP35 for those specifically wanting to know what Cree LED is used in this. So the low battery indicators that I mentioned um, with the button here, it, that uh, when it gets to less than 25% uh, current left in the battery, this is going to blink yellow once every two seconds. When the condition of the battery drops below 10%, you're going to get this light blinking in red once every one second. Now the high temperature indication, you have to remember this, um, you'll, you'll have to remember this because they, they can be confusing because they confused me. The warning for the high temperature blinks yellow and it blinks twice every two seconds. When it's critically hot, it blinks red twice every one second. So when this was happening to me, I was confusing a high temperature um, uh, situation with low battery and I'm like, well, I just recharged it because I, I have not uh, memorized all of the uh, blink codes for this particular um, flashlight. Now, the light does have a, a switching state uh, indication that uh, tells you the battery level. So if it's uh, roughly 100%, this LED will blink uh, periodically green. If it's less than 75%, it will periodically blink yellow. And that blink is a one blink every five seconds. Now you can also turn that off. Um, you can, uh, you can uh, turn that off by a combination of uh, unscrewing the tail cap, pressing and holding the button, and then screwing down the tail cap, and you can uh, turn that feature off. Now, the lockout function, which they list on this, um, it's not a, a really a button combination per se. So, uh, in case you're worried about the button accidentally getting pressed and the light turning on, their lockout function is to uh, unscrew the tail cap uh, one quarter turn. And let's see, that pretty much covers all of the functionality here with um, with uh, the different modes and so on. Now one thing I really like about this is, is when I run this in uh, the turbo mode at 1700 lumens, it will basically run until the battery's dead. Uh, it's not a, a situation where you've got a short run time and then it scales down to a, a lower uh, lumens output. It'll, it'll run at 1700 until the battery's completely dead, assuming it doesn't overheat. Um, if it does overheat, it will uh, auto dim the light until it cools down. So you, that's one of the things you have to uh, keep in mind with, the, with these types of flashlights is that thermal protection circuitry. Now, when this light uh, got down to less than 25% and this LED started blinking red, I actually measured the time I had left on it. Um, between the 25% left in the battery down to about 10%, the light was fairly constant. When it got to 10%, the light started dimming. And it would periodically dim as the battery got weaker and weaker. At the 25% reserve capacity left in the battery, this light ran for an hour and a half. That's my actual timing. And it got weaker and weaker until it actually just stopped working altogether. But I had fairly usable light for probably an hour and 20 minutes, uh, hour 15 minutes, hour and 20 minutes roughly. The last 10 minutes or so, the light was pretty dim. It wasn't really usable for a lot. But 
really, really long runtime um, with with this battery. So I was real happy with with those results. And on my talking notes here, I do believe I've covered everything that um, I wanted to talk about with the warranty and the storage. Uh, I'm going to dim the lights here and I'll just kind of give you an idea of what the color output of this light looks right here in my little work area. Okay, I've just uh, dimmed the lights here on my workbench so we can kind of get a, you know, you can kind of see um, how how this uh, light light pattern is. You can see we've got a, a center hotspot, which is pretty typical for these single uh, LED lights, and then you have uh, the, the the halo outline um, where it's kind of like a floodlight uh, going out to the sides. And this is this has got a, a this beam projects pretty far and pretty wide when you're when you're outside. So if you're jogging or walking, you can basically light up a whole path. You can light up way down the path, and um, you know good have good visibility with this type of flight uh, light. It it uh, is pretty typical for the bezel design and and the pattern, the light output pattern. It's very similar to a lot of other lights that I've reviewed. So uh, nothing out of the ordinary there. Um, you know, um, color-wise, I don't have a problem with this particular color. Um, it works uh, works for me just fine, and uh, the the super white is nice. Also, it's it's just kind of up to your particular preference. So that's uh, basically going to uh, end this particular tabletop review of the uh, Army Tech Prime C2 Pro magnetic uh, rechargeable flashlight uh, available for ninety dollars uh, from army tech's website i'll put the link in the description now if this edc type of light is not your cup of tea uh, be sure to uh, check out their other offerings they have a lot of different flashlights on their site they've got larger ones smaller ones uh, tactical lights uh, edc lights uh, a wide variety of, of different lights and at different price points. If, if $90 is out of your budget range, there's definitely other options that are uh, more affordable. So um, I got to give the uh, Army Tech Light uh, two thumbs up. Um, they've come up with a great product uh, with a lot of different functionality.